my things hmm? straight from the graveyard <laughs> you're so glad you could join us here at monster movie night for a special uh, pre Halloween getting ready for the uh, Halloween season <laughs> after all 2018 the year the Halloween's season of this particular year is is here and we've got to get ready for it so you know we need to contact the spirits from beyond the grave after all some people call them haunts of course here in the south we call them haints but uh, either way we need to uh, summon them up and find out what movie it is that we're going to show tonight eh Boris <laughs> right so have you got yes you've got your fingers on the Ouija board itself so let us get ready spirits from beyond the grave Come to us here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. I, your master, Bobby Gammonster, internet horror host and creepy old curator, <laughs> summons you to take part within this room through this Ouija board. Tell us what we need to know. Oh my, and we miss you too, my fiends. Uh, you know, that was haunting. And I think, I think what they were trying to tell us with the yes, the no, and the miss you, and the this and that was that. In fact, we need to show tonight's feature, the classic called Haunts, <laughs> with Aldo Ray and other fascinating people. Cameron Mitchell. Uh, we've had dear Cameron in some other films uh, not too long ago. We had uh, Nightmare in Wax and uh, not too long ago, maybe I think last year or last season, there was the one where he was on Frankenstein's Island. Good old Cameron Mitchell. I've said it before, you might remember him as Uncle Buck <laughs> in High Chaparral. Well, he's also uh, a, a staple of B horror movies. He's got that southern accent and that squinty eye and well anyway you'll see. Let us go to tonight's film The Haunts. Let's make sure. Are you sure that's what we need to go to dear ones from the grave? <laughs> <laughs> so let us go to tonight's feature haunts Love you. 
him go. You're going to argue about it. I'll go get it myself. Bridget, don't get to the right now. Just because he's the baby. Bridget. Okay, okay. And boy, I'm a slave around here. Oh, I forgot. Her, Doc? Yeah, it looks like. We'll know better after the autopsy. It doesn't seem anything like it. Yeah. Well, I'll be at the hospital if you need me. Right. Come on, Dale. Move him out a little. Yeah. Let's go down to my place. Yeah. Business, huh, Doc? Yeah. You gonna say something? It'll keep. That 
That's a good girl. Having a good breakfast? Sheriff's deputy said they found her hair in an old tin. They found one arm clear down by the lake. Where have you been? I sent you out over two hours ago. Be back tomorrow for them tomatoes. Oh, by the way, still. I had a flat tire. Flat tire? You expect me to believe that? Every other day you get a flat tire. Do you want to get paid? Oh, right on here. Everything's so expensive these days. Hi, Ingrid. Hi. The sheriff says it's a maniac. McPherson's been trying to organize the men, but the sheriff says no. There's already too many men with guns. If you ask me, I... No one's asking you now. Well, I think shooting's too good for a creep like that. Just like he did that poor little Lucille. That's what I do, then. What can I do for you ladies? I don't think I could eat meat for a week. That's guts. That's disgusting. It's delicious. You just gotta know how to prepare. Maybe I can come up and give you a lesson sometimes. Anytime, honey. You know where I live. <laughs> How about you, Miss Winston? 
Huh? You're gonna join in the fun. Sheriff Peterson. You scared me half to death. I'm sorry if I frightened you, but I, I've been checking the farms in the area to make sure that everybody keeps their windows closed and their doors locked. Yes, I heard about all the terrible goings on. Mm. Would you like to come in? Yes, thank you. Yeah. How about some coffee, Sheriff? Oh, thanks. You, you got anything else? Milk? <laughs> yeah, okay, milk. There's some housekeeper, Ingrid. Corns are so clean you can eat right off them. Makes some guy a really nice wife. Would you like a sandwich? No, no, I'll just have this and be on my way. <coughs> Very good, Ingrid. Sheriff? Mm -hmm. Any idea who it is? Not yet. All we found at the Olson farm was a pair of scissors. Oh? How much else to go on for now? Have you noticed anything unusual around? Unusual? Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Someone hanging around, strangers, hitchhikers. Anybody has no business up here. No? Nobody comes up here. Nobody at all, except for... You know, you were saying? What? I asked if anybody had been hanging around. No, no one. Except? Oh, except, uh, except for when my old car breaks down and I can't get my groceries. Sometimes that boy from Mr. Lewis's brings me my orders. Frankie? Yes. Hmm. Anybody else? No. Nobody else. Huh. 
Ingrid, there's a maniac loose out there in times like these. We, we all have to keep an eye out for one another. You know what I mean? Yes. You see anybody suspicious, uh, notice anything out of the ordinary, give a holler, huh? I would, sir. You be careful now. I will. Bye, sir. Now, where the devil are those scissors? Fellow. He's single, too. Hello, Ingrid. Hello. Why don't you folk join Sally and me for a drink? Would that be okay with you? No, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. It's getting late, and I don't drink. Howard! Uh-oh. Gotta go. <laughs> War Department's call. Okay, Howard. See you later. This is a nice church you have here. Um, look, we could just talk over a Coke or something. I mean, no, I... thanks. Uh, I already promised sure. somebody. Uh Margaret? Margaret? My car broke down. I don't dare walk alone. Oh, well, maybe we can uh, get someone to take us home. No, no, let's not. It's not very far. I don't mind if you walk together. Okay, I'll get my umbrella. Excuse me, do you live near here? No. Excuse me. my substitute. Ugh, you ought to hear her play. Why, does she play like you sing? What do you mean by that? Just a little. You know, sometime I want to sing in the opera. Cheer up, my children. Walk in the sunlight. You'll understand. Oh, my son. Margaret, please don't go. Margaret, 
none of your business. There's a litter bird around here, haven't you heard? Maybe come on in here and I'll protect you from the boogeyman. Maybe we can do some boogeying ourselves. It's better than walking. You go if you want to. Oh, come on, Ingrid. Some other time, okay? a ride. That's what you think. Oh, come on, Ingrid. Don't you ever have any fun? Oh, he's disgusting. The way he looks at me through those beady eyes, he makes me feel dirty all over. I don't trust him. Funny how what's been happening can change everything. It's not funny at all, Margaret. The silver's raped and slaughtered. See, that's what I mean. You go around suspecting everybody. Well, how can you help it, knowing there is a maniac out there just waiting to jump on you? Lucky Uncle Carl is with me. Oh, I didn't know he was in town. That's good. See, you won't be alone then. How long is your uncle staying for? Oh, he just came a few days ago. A while, I hope, but with him you never know. Oh? Uh -huh. Does he talk funny too? <laughs> no, he was born in America. And I don't talk funny. You sound funny to me. <laughs> well, you sound funny to me. <laughs> hey, what's he like? Oh, he keeps to himself a lot. Mm. I'd like to meet him. I don't think you would. Why? <laughs> what is he, the boogeyman or something? <laughs> Margaret! Yeah, Mom. Uh-huh. Who's that with you? Ingrid. Oh, well, come on in now and lock up after you. Okay. You want to come in for a while? No, I have a lot to do tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Good night. Imagination was probably only a rabbit or a deer. No, it wasn't. It was a man. Where are you going? Down. 
What are you talking about? Ingrid, please, you get a good night's rest. You tell me all about it tomorrow. Please don't go. No, I won't let you go. You can't leave me alone. You don't understand. You can't go out there and kill her. If anything happened to you, I don't know what I'd do. Ingrid, stop it. You have nothing to worry about. You're talking nonsense. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing. But there is! Ingrid, do we have to go through this again? I think I made it all up. I think you need some rest. It's another one of them calls, honey. Should I ask her to call back? Yeah. Sheriff, this is Ingrid. Who? Ingrid Svensson. That maniac? I mean, I didn't exactly see him. Here, honey. Okay? He attacked me. You all right? Yes, I'm okay. I'm home now. I got away. Gentlemen in this crummy hall. 
Where are you from? I'm from Baltimore, originally. Hey, t hey, Tony. This this guy's from Baltimore, originally. Right now. <laughs> Where are you from now? Well, right now, I guess I'm from around here. No, nobody in this joint can dance. That's why I get a little rusty. What you think? Of what? I thought you were very good. Really, you were very good. You mean it? Yes, I do. Thanks. <laughs> Baltimore originally. Let's dance. I'm sorry, Miss. I don't dance. Oh, call me now. Oh, come on. I can teach you. All you gotta do is wiggle a little bit. Right down here. <laughs> no, I said no. Okay? You're ticklish, aren't you? <laughs> I said no. Okay. Okay. Lots of things in life besides dancing. Right, Tony? Right now. <laughs> You want to buy me a drink? No. I'll tell you. I'm sorry, I've got to go. What's the matter? Oh, come on, Baltimore. I thought you were a gentleman. Don't you like girls? Don't you think you've had about enough? What the hell kind of crack is that? What's the matter, miss? It's all right. I'm just giving her a little friendly advice. Advice? My ass. Who the hell do you think you are, my father? Dumb creep. You got no class leading me on like that. Go back to Baltimore, you dumb creep. Ready for another? No. Maybe just a little one. Oh, maybe two little ones. Three little ones. Frankie Jameson, this is the second time this week you've kept me waiting. I swear to God, five more minutes and I was going home. I mean for good. Dang it, woman, don't you start bugging me now. I got a headache, I'm tired, and I ain't gonna deal with it tonight. Well, I'm tired too. For God's sakes, Frankie, I was out there over a half an hour. Look, I gotta work. And sometimes I gotta work late, and when I do, don't you get uptight about it. Well, it's just... When I'm out there, I start thinking things. Like what? Well, like maybe you didn't mean those things you said about us. You. Yeah, I had an accident at the store. Accident? What kind of accident? Yeah, an accident. I don't want to talk about it. Let's do not all right? That's bull. I don't know where you got that from. Loretta, you don't know a damn thing. Now, if you're going to be in such a lousy mood, why don't you go? I don't want to. Hey. I'm sorry. I guess I'm just the jealous type. Here, I'll kiss it, make it better. What's wrong now? I hate that baby doll. I was only trying to be nice. Well, why don't you try growing up? That's the hundredth time you told me that. Well, maybe I'm too young for you. Maybe you should find yourself an older woman. Maybe I will. Well, maybe you should go straight to hell.
time is it? Good night. Creek never even showed up. What are you waiting for? Steve McQueen? <laughs> Shut up. You got no class, Tony. I'm leaving. Good night, Mel. Take it easy, huh? Good night, Tony. You know, Tony, you got about this much class. But I like you. I like you too, Mel. Okay, I'm coming. This is no restaurant, you know. Chicken foot. scissors to the lab, will you? And this time, be sure you don't get your fingers on them? Yes, sir. Right, sir. No problem, sir. Hellman, show some respect. Yes, sir. My God, it's like a butcher shop. Did you give him anything? I already tried to, but nothing doing. Uh, maybe she knows best. You know, if I listened to her, maybe Nell would still be alive. What do you mean? Keep this under your hat, Doc, but Ingrid called me last night. Told me she was being chased by a man. Doc, 
every woman in this town has been calling me. My phone never stops ringing. Everyone thinks of being chased, followed, going to be raped. I need an army to get all those calls answered. So you thought it was just another scared woman imagining things? Wouldn't you? Anybody else, maybe, but not Ingrid. No, she's too down to earth. Doc, you got any more of those pills you gave me the other night? I think you better plan on seeing me at the office. Uh. Doc, Sheriff, please sit down. I've got to go file the test certificate. Are you sure I can't give you anything? No, thank you, Doc. The Lord will heal me in this time. Yes. Well, you call me if you need anything. Ingrid, I, I want to apologize for not coming right over last night after you called. Sheriff, this had nothing to do with you. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah, well, amen. Amen. Goodness, and look at me sitting here. Let me get you something. No, don't trouble yourself. No trouble at all, Sheriff. Ingrid, can you think of anyone who might have taken the scissors from your sewing basket? No. No one. You sure? Yes. Uh, please sit down, Sheriff. I get some clean fruit. No, no. Never mind. I've got to go. I'm sorry I can't be of any more help. I'm sorry, too. You look like you need some rest. I'll have Mr. Lewis and Frankie up to help you with the chores. No, I don't want that boy up here. I'm fine, really. Whatever you say. Ingrid, did you go to church yesterday? Yes, to choir practice. Why? Did you happen to meet a fellow there by the name of Spry? Yes, I did meet somebody. That sounds like it could be him. Do you think he did it? I don't know. You take care of yourself. If you need me for anything, just call, and I'll be right over. All right. A chilling feature so far, eh, Boris? <laughs> what about you, my friends, huh? You, you, you think so too? I, I, I see that you're chilled to the bone, <laughs> and you're melting. Well, you're you're rather melting all the flesh right off there. <laughs> anyway. We were speaking about Halloween, and of course we're getting started little by little 
this being the beginning of October and of course as you can see I already have a nice little uh, jack-o-lantern that was sent to us by uh, our old fiend Vincent Grimley over at Night Chills Theater we we also would like to thank him for this he gave us to us oh about a year or so ago and uh, we like to put it out every year in honor of him and in honor of Halloween and speaking of uh, decorations and such um, I stopped by the old ghoul store not too long ago and, and found a few things, uh, odds and ends, as it were, items of Halloween that we might use on our uh, Halloween tree at the end of the month or um, thereabouts. Let's see what we have. We have, of course, ah, we have atomic candles. And uh, these are the best kind. You don't have to worry about them catching on fire or anything. So, that you know, there they are. Don't they, isn't that one? Yes. So wonderful. Try to spit it out, Bobby. Try to spit it out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to spit on you, the dear Boney. Anyway, yes. Wonderful candles that goes anywhere for uh, calling up the dead doing, during seances and the Ouija board talks. And let's see what else did we have. Oh, my. A good old Igor. Uh, that's right, my old pal and fiend Igor from uh, from the old uh, Monsters Day. You know, bats are a wonderful staple to have, <laughs> uh, especially for around the Halloween season, as you can see. Mm, I don't want to scare you guys too badly. Mm, and then we'll put him there, and he can be on the tree as well. Hmm, more bats. Well, these are a little bit sparkly, but uh, well. That's okay, that's, you know, I hate to think about sparkly vampires, but you know, some of the, the newer generation, they enjoy the, uh, the sparkly ones. So, you know, for the tykes, the youngsters, the, the new monster kids to come, well, okay, well, we can use that somewhere to pin something up. <laughs> what else did we have? Oh, yes, indeed, we have here, uh, well, ornaments for the tree there seems to be eyeballs and purple and white uh, ornaments there and what else oh there's more there's purple but the eyeballs that uh, that go on the tree the purple the spiritual and spooky attacular type of uh, ornaments uh, it's not just for that other holiday you know that comes later down the road <laughs> anyway that's just a few of the things that we found at the old ghoul store and that we will be trying to put on our um, Halloween tree a little later in the month mm hmm so well, let's let's get back to tonight's feature haunts I better take this off of the um, yes I better put this back down here oh sorry you need to, you need to hold on to that because we need to speak to the fellows from beyond and and to make sure that we're oh yes oh yes as you can see the, the <laughs> anyway. yes yes we need to get back to the show haunts and as you can see the little planchette does come up off of it and it was moving by itself well it was moving because of the haunts that were here at the manor moving it telling us it's time to go back to tonight's feature haunts <laughs>
right. Too much attention to the dead. Not enough to the living. That's the trouble with this world today.
Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. You're not still mad at me, are you, love? No, Uncle. I'm not mad. Don't you worry about a thing. I'll take good care of you. That's what I'm here for, you know. Sleep tight now, love. I'll see you in the morning. A word to anybody. If you do, I'll be back, and the next time I'm not going to be so gentle. It wasn't my fault, Father Marks. God knows. God knows everything. But if I am to help you, I too must know. Child, silence will keep the dark cloud of sin. to be kept out of the kingdom of heaven. No. Go on. Speak. I feel so dirty. Yes. Confess your sins and beg God's repentance. Pray for me, Father. Let us pray together. You are riddled with sin, child. Open your heart. Show all the filth and blackness inside. Pray to him. He alone has the power to purify and absolve, to wash you clean, with the blood of his only begotten son. Say you, Christ will save me. Christ will save me. The blood of the lamb will purify me and make me clean before the Lord. The blood of the lamb will purify me and make me clean before the Lord. Wait for me in the rectory. Continue to pray, child. Continue to pray. Stay as long as you like.
believe that. He's a Christian child. You're forced to become a victim of your lust. Know what you must do. Go to the sheriff and speak to him. How is she, Doc? How is it possible? Doesn't seem to add up. Maybe he just didn't have a chance to give her the full treatment. How bad is she? I've got her under sedation now, but she'll be okay. When will I be able to talk to her? Well, she says her uncle can take care of her, so I'll send her home in the morning. Oh, I almost forgot. Maybe you can find something in here. Earth particles we found under her fingernails. <laughs> Sheriff. Sheriff, can I talk to you for just a moment? Other Marks, there's something that'll keep I just as well. But just take a moment. Okay. Sheriff, this is very difficult for me. Did the young man, Frankie, talk to you? No, about what? He hasn't. Well, then, Sheriff, I guess it's important that you know. Your daughter, Loretta. What about Loretta? She is, uh, carrying Frankie's baby. Now, Sheriff, if there's anything you would like me to do. No, brother. Thank you.
nice. Good night. What the hell do you think I am? Better not book him yet. Why not? We got the killer cornered down at the sawmill right now. Are you sure? Let the song. He nearly got him. Frankie, we better tell him. No. Just let me handle it. Might be some fireworks. I'll be right over. Get in the car. <laughs> I said get in the car. Tough, aren't you? Stay away from her. I'm Bobby Gammonster, internet horror host. This is Boris T. Buzzard, co-host of Monster Movie Night. And you're watching it right here and now. <laughs>
from Rockville State Prison that he was a psychopathic killer. Been wanted for quite a while. So as far as you're concerned then, Sheriff, this case is closed. That's right, Bob. Closed. Thanks very much, Sheriff Peterson. Thanks, Bob. Well, folks, it looks like the long nightmare is over. Here in our newsroom, we have discovered that Bill Spry came to the area approximately three weeks ago. He has been working as a handyman. To his neighbors, Bill Spry appeared to be a quiet, good-natured, decent young man. Whatever madness caused him to rape oh, and murder, no. we'll never know. But one thing that we can be grateful for, Bill Spry will not be searching for innocent victims in this town tonight, or They're any other night. Terrible. Now to the weather. Oh, sorry, folks, I don't care where you're going. I got to talk to your dad. Is he home? No, he ain't. Please, it's terribly important. Where can I find him? What do you want him for? You want to tell him more lies about Frankie? No. I mean, I never lied in my life. Oh, come off it. Who do you think you're kidding with all that prim and proper stuff? You've got the dirtiest mind in town. All those lies you've been spreading about Frankie. You're just jealous because you can't have him. Look at you. You're nobody, nothing. You're old enough to be his mother. I'm sorry, I... Just get out of here and leave us alone! Truth. I've got to find truth. Bad! That's it. They can just match the fingerprints on... on the buttons. I'll show them. Believe me, I've got proof. <laughs> proof? <laughs> proof, Ingrid? What kind of proof?
Ingrid! 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 Uncle Carl! It's all right now. Everything is all right now. I've got to call the sheriff. No. Why be foolish? But the sheriff has to know. Frank is the one. Why? The sheriff didn't believe you before. Why should he believe you now? You're the only one who can be harmed. What do you mean? You killed Frankie. But People only mean... believe what they see. The sheriff sees the body. He'll punish you. What shall I do? Leave everything to Uncle Carl. Carl buried him. But you only did it to protect me. You won't hurt him, will you? No, no. No, no. We won't hurt him. Ingrid, are you afraid he might hurt you? No, he wouldn't hurt me. I'm all his god. He needs me. We're very close. But not in a dirty way, of course. You mean he wouldn't rape you? No. Sometimes he scares me half to death with the crazy things he does. But he wouldn't do that. What kind of crazy things? I don't know if I can tell you everything. Then just tell us as much as you can. Well, sometimes, sometimes he disappears for the longest time and he doesn't tell me where he's going. He. Uh, he doesn't want to worry me, though, and he always comes back. I... Dear Lord, he... I told you, he, he loves me. He loves me, he loves me, he loves me! They find her uncle yet? No. The sheriff issued no points for him, though. Hey, come on, Lester. Let's find that damn grave and go home. Don't be a real nice. You go check over there by the barn. I'm going home. Yeah. Ingrid. Do you have any idea where the body is? I couldn't see. Uh, sir? Excuse me, Ingrid. Ingrid, it's too dark for them to see anything out there. They'll have to come back in the morning. Tell her I'm going to be here bright and early. I better stick around here tonight. 
Sheriff. The last thing Uncle Carl said was that you wouldn't believe me. Do you believe me? I really don't know what to believe. You make enough noise to wake up the dead. You said bright and early, Sheriff. Okay, okay. Look, start around the back. All right, around the back. If I, if I need to give a yell. Yes, oh! Sheriff, what do you think it looks like? What? A grave. How the hell should I know? A grave's a grave. Use your head. Right. Hellman, Hellman. Take it easy, will you? The lady's still asleep. Right, right, Sheriff. Trust to you the soul of our dearly departed sister. We pray that you will gather her up in loving mercy so that she may find everlasting peace in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the agony of her death atone for her sins. Her suffering in this veil of tears and madness is at an end. Praise the Lord. Amen. Goodbye, dear Ingrid. We will meet again when we are all united on that distant shore to which we are all bound. Dust we are, and to dust we shall return.
Carl Anderson, Ingrid's uncle, aren't you? Sheriff Peterson. Right. I got here as soon as I could. Did we talk? I appreciate your calling me, Sheriff. How'd you locate me? We found your number on Ingrid's night table. How was your trip? I almost didn't make it. The New York airports were all fogged in. I was lucky to get a flight out of Newark. It's a terrible shock, Sheriff. A terrible shock. It's a damn shame, Mr. Anderson. I'm really sorry about your niece. Sheriff, could you tell me exactly what happened? I'm really still trying to figure it out. She always seemed so, so level-headed. All of a sudden, she goes out with these wild stories about being raped. Wild stories? What do you mean, wild stories? Well, uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, and he's saying that she, she died a virgin. A virgin? Yeah. The doctor confirmed it twice. First one, she claimed she got raped by Frankie, and then they get at the autopsy. And you mean she made up everything? The attacker, Frankie, everything? Oh, no, 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 no. She was attacked, all right. She managed to get away. The way I figure it, that's when she started loosening her bolts, you know? Then when she found the... Uh, Nell, right in her own backyard, she completely flipped. You okay, Mr. Anderson? Yes. Yes, thank you. Tell me about, uh, what about this Frankie? He never laid a hand on her. Never? Never. Found that out later, of course. And we analyzed the particles under her fingernails, and it was her own hair, her own flesh. Her own blood. You mean... You mean she did all that to her, herself? Yeah. Oh, my God. Sorry, Mr. Harrison. Those are the facts. Oh, my God, my God. Esther had lived. Esther? Who's that? My sister. Ingrid's mother. She also committed suicide. Well, how old was Ingrid then? She was uh, five. Her parents both died the same week. My God, both? Her father's death was was an accident. Were they very close? No, she hated, she hated him. My sister hated him. She was beautiful and tender and kind. He never truly appreciated her. I meant we're, we're Ingrid and her father very close. What? Ingrid and her father. No, no, he was... He was rarely home. I see. And her mother? And her mother? Uh, close. Uh, very close. Mm. Very close. I don't think we ever got over it. Mr. Anderson, when was the last time you visited with Ingrid? I never did. Why? 
You never did. Never. The way she talked, you were with her up to the last minute. Well, she often asked me to visit her at the orphanage and later at the house. Orphanage? Yes, after my sister. After her parents died, Ingrid spent 13 years at the uh, that European orphanage up the coast. I did write her from time to time. I uh, sent her money every couple of months. Looks like she needed more than that. I just wish there was something we could have done. Nothing anybody could have done. Giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah, well, amen.
We are so glad that you could make it tonight here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, where you will find, hmm, macabre toys, uh, movie props, masks, games, models, mm -hmm, and of course, films for Monster Movie Night. <laughs> Hopefully, it uh, tonight's feature didn't chill you so badly that you look like my good fiend here, Boney, and of course, the start of my other good fiend here, well, Rigor Mortis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Boris, it's time for bed, right? I see that you're on your per your perch and uh, and getting ready for that slumber of the night going to guard me while I sleep for during the day. <laughs> we do hope you enjoyed the film and hope that you're getting yourselves ready for the end of the month Halloween. Also, it is our great time of the year, not only Halloween but our season finale, season 9 finale so that we'll go into next year when we come back to season 10. But don't worry folks, we still have plenty of fantastic fun and thrills in store for you until then. <laughs> and as I say, until then, and next time, keep screaming. <laughs>